Hello guys, in the last video I explained what the different wires coming off the CQ uh, Control 32 main controller board in, in one of their infrared tractors does. So this is the board from the John Deere 6920S. So I explained what the normal lights did, so we can see here these two green lights are representing our headlights, these red ones represent our tail lights, yellow ones are indicators. So what I'm going to do today is explain how we can drive more powerful LEDs using our normal CQ Control 32 main controller board. So I'm talking about driving LEDs like these 5mm straw hat super bright white LEDs which are what I normally put all over my tractor models. So I probably will put some of these on my Fent 930 model but today I'm just going to show you probably the safe way to drive these LEDs. So we know that the LEDs that come on the tractor are being driven by an NPN transistor and they have the resistor built into the main control board here. So what we're going to do is disconnect the LEDs here and instead we'll connect in a PNP transistor or multiple PNP transistors if you want because then um, you'd need to make sure that your PNP transistor can handle enough current to drive all the LEDs that you want to drive. So what we're going to do is use the NPN transistor on the tractor's control board to switch the PNP transistor which will then drive all our LEDs. So that means that we can drive as many of these LEDs as we want provided our, our PNP transistor can handle that much current. That's what we want to do so I'll set it up and explain how it works. Okay so let's have a look at what we have here. So here is our PNP transistor, it's important that it's a PNP transistor. Out of that I have the emitter connected here to the 5 volt rail. I've provided its own wire. That's probably a good idea for you to do as well. So you'd solder your wire to the battery contact back here. I would probably just chance the positive wire that's in the middle of the LEDs here. But you, if you want to be really, really safe, you should provide your own wire back to the battery contact. That way you know your wire can handle the current that you're going to be adding. Then the base of the PNP is connected to this resistor here so that resistor limits the current uh, that's going to the base just so that you don't drive a huge amount of current into the or through the switch which is going to be our NPN transistor and then finally we have our um, collector connected to the, the positive of the LEDs and then through the LED onto a 20 ohm resistor here and back to ground so what's basically happening here is when the base of the PMP transistor is connected to the positive no current is flowing because the um, emitter and the base leg are both pretty close to the same voltage to be a difference because of the resistor but to be fairly close to the same voltage then when you pull it to the pull the base to the ground the current flows down through the resistor here down into ground and that switches the PMP transistor on basically so you turn on the LEDs. It's, it lets the current flow through the collector as well, through the LEDs, through the resistor, down into ground. So when we come over to our circuit here, we know that we have a resistor driving this LED. So let's take these off our, let's disconnect our headlights here basically. So we've disconnected our headlights. Now our NPN transistor already has the resistor that was previously driving the LED. So we don't need this resistor now, let's get rid of that and just connect our wire directly. I'll switch the lights off first so you can see our tail lights are off there. Then we connect that directly to what would have been the ground leg of one of these headlight LEDs. So now when we hit our switch, obviously our lights come on because we're switching on the PNP transistor. Now, next thing, we've disconnected our headlights so that's not what we want but now we also have the opportunity to drive these LEDs at much higher current than they previously were so we can get them a lot brighter so what I have here are two LEDs were disconnected they didn't have any resistors so I added in new resistors and I put them to ground so previously the two headlights were just on a PCB the, the positive connections were both soldered together so that's okay and there was two outputs for the negative connections so what you'd want to do there 
is uh, get whatever value of resistor you want for the specific brightness you need and then solder one of those onto each of those ground outputs wrap the legs of both of those resistors together and then connect that to ground then take the positive connection from your LEDs and connect that to the same pin on the PNP transistor as you have your uh, super bright LEDs connected to so that way all the current is flowing through your PNP transistor so as you can see we have our headlights back on again and I'll just reconnect the big lights and you might have noticed they're a lot brighter than they previously were so they're quite a bit brighter there that's because we're using a lower resistance now so there you go that's how you add uh, extra LEDs onto your control board you just need to use a single PNP transistor and uh, spec the resistors properly for your LEDs so that's how you add extra lights to the tractor you can of course do the same thing with the indicator LEDs or the tail light LEDs if you want and I think that's a fairly straightforward and fairly safe way to do that uh, I don't think you'd damage your uh, control board doing it this way I hope you found that video useful. If you have any comments or suggestions, uh, let me know below the video or head on over to the forum. And that's pretty much everything for today, so thanks very much for watching.